Uh, it's important to have friends in your life who can like sometimes call you out on your bullshit and not just tell you what you want to hear and be like, no, you know, break up with that person. He's terrible for you or she's terrible for you or like get your act together. And my friends did that for me and I'm very excited about it. See, Garrett understands exactly what I keep trying to teach all of you. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So I like to take things that are happening in the YouTube community or pop culture and teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton, a ton of videos, and I love my subscribers so much. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Yesterday, I got blown up. I got blown up in my comment section on my last video, on Twitter, in DMs, on Instagram, and people are like, have you seen the new Garrett video? Have you seen the new Garrett video? Have you seen the new Garrett video? And I'm like, no, chill. And you know, you all just brought it to my attention. I'm like, okay, cool. And Tristan and I were talking about it, like it's, it's funny. I'm like, wow, people keep saying this. And Tristan's like, well, yeah, you just got a bunch of Shane Dawson fans. Of course, they're gonna tell you about Garrett Watts' new video. I'm like, all right. Point taken. But anyways, thank you all of you. I love when you send me like recommendations and let me know what's going on and you wanna hear, you know, the mental health aspects of these videos. So yeah, like uh, Tristan and I watched this last night and this was, this was such an amazing video. Like, y'all know how I am. You know how I get. Like, I kept pausing it. Like, it took Tristan and I maybe like an hour and a half to watch that video. So I kept pausing it. I kept taking notes. There's so many things. And like, I could honestly make like 10 videos about different subjects in this video alone, but I'm trying to calm down. So I'm gonna try to compact it all into this video. So Zach, here's what we're gonna do, all right? You're gonna play a clip. I'm gonna talk about the subject. Like, I think Philip DeFrango is really good at like talking about a lot of things in a short period of time. So now, let me try to Philly D this video. You ready, Zach? Good. <laughs> Bless you. So the first thing is, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be completely honest. I wasn't subscribed to Garrett. Why? Why was I not subscribed to Garrett? Even though I love, love, love his content so much. It's because he's inconsistent. He's inconsistent. Like, I feel like you gotta earn my subscribe, right? My subscription. And like, he just, he just hasn't been uploading. And in this video, he talked about it a little bit, but you guys, I made a video about Jordan Lay uh, not that long ago, um, Bobby Burns' ex-girlfriend. Did y'all know they broke up? What? Anyways, I made a video about that. Like when she made her anxiety video, she put up a trailer and said, video coming tomorrow. Then it came out days later. Well, Garrett made the same, uh, the same mistake and he said, coming soon, right? And like, here's the thing, here's anxiety tip for all of you. Like, do not give yourself these types of deadlines. Do not do those kind of things because then they make you more anxious. Like all of you, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I don't tell you my upload schedule. I don't tell you if I'm gonna do a video every day. I don't tell you if I'm gonna doing two videos a day or three videos a day. You know why? because on the day that I don't feel like making a video, I didn't promise you anything. You see what I mean? Like, I think accountability is very good and all of that, but like, if you're somebody who struggles with this and you have a lot of up and down days, like, do not set uh, set yourself up for failure like this. So hopefully, Garrett learned his lesson. I'm gonna touch on subscribing to Garrett, which I did a little bit later in this video. The video I figured would be called Organizing My Insane Hoarder Life in 24 Hours. What do you think? When I think that's changes? impossible because you started filming a week ago, so it's not 24 hours. So what just happened is I lowered the camera and I genuinely said to Shane, like, Shane, like, you can't say that. <laughs> like, stop. Because I was like, you're gonna ruin the video concept, like the idea, because I thought that was such a great title. Organizing my place in 24 hours. But <laughs> that's the thing about Shane is I can't pull that in front of him. He kind of just called me out. So in that clip right there, like Shane showed up and like Garrett's talking about how like he, he was uncomfortable. Like Shane like called him out. Shane called him out for BSing him. Right? And like, yes, this is what I keep telling you guys. Like, you need people around who tell you what you need to hear, not what you wanna hear. So throughout this entire episode about like hoarding and just Garrett's, you know, kind of like opening up about this stuff, there's so many similarities between addiction and just mental health issues as a whole. This is why I really try to like teach all of you. Like, people think that addiction is over here and mental health is over here, it's the same thing. Like, what Shane had to do with Garrett is what I have to do with when working with people trying to overcome addiction. Like, you have to call them out on their BS constantly, constantly gotta call him out. Like, Shane was like making faces at Garrett because he knew, he knew Garrett was just full of 
So Shane is a very good friend to keep around because he will not co-sign on your BS. He's gonna call you out on that stuff. Oh my God, you're like totally kissing Shane's butt right now. Leave me alone. <gasps> oh, I just got the chills. <laughs> this looks like a serial killer is like planning area. Jane, I told you it's a work in progress. <laughs> so this is an intervention. I, I love that. I didn't think about it like that, but it kind of actually is. Perfect. So this is what you know, an intervention can look like. So uh, some of you have seen the, the show Intervention and like that, that, that is what we call like a formal intervention. That is like worst case, last case scenario where people are gonna cut them out of their lives and all of that. But this is something very easy you can do. If somebody in your life is struggling with something like it's time to go over there and just say, yo, we care about you, we're sitting here. But like, here's the thing too. One of the, one of the tips I want you to take from this is that they, when they came over, they're like, we're gonna do this right now. You know, and Garrett's like, oh, well, you know, we could schedule it. No, 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 we're doing it now. Like when you're uh, talking with a drug addict or an alcoholic, like that's what you have to do. If they're ready, and if, if, it's, if they have that moment of clarity, it's time to do it now. Because Garrett talked a million times about how he procrastinated this thing. Literally, and the clothes. You wear the same shirt every day. You're like me, so why do you have so many clothes? It's just funny because, and I want to say this real quick before um, before we continue, um, is that I am not a materialistic person. It's funny that this video is about me having so many things and stuff. Because I've always felt very much of the mentality of like, yeah, if there was like a fire and I lost everything, like who cares? Because like stuff is stuff and whatever. Um, but that's what I thought. <laughs> Sometimes our inner dialogue and our physical environments don't match up, which is a weird thing to process sometimes. And the really dark thing is like, and I was, it sounded like I was joking when I said this to Ryland earlier. I was trying to tell him, I was like, I've been working in my head and heart. <laughs> I've been working so hard in here and going on like an emotionally exhausting journey and looking at stuff and weighing it, the pros and cons and living in, I was like, I've been doing this for a week. You know, I was saying it was 24 hours to try to like salvage the video, but really it's been like a long time. You could even argue five months of this for me. That right there was one of my favorite clips. One of my favorite clips because it was the clarity and this self-awareness. That's what we all need. We need self-awareness. So Garrett's saying like, it felt exhausting. It felt like he was doing a lot of work. It felt like he didn't like hold on to things and he wasn't materialistic. But what he says is that his actions were not lining up to his mind. Like this is why I tell all of you, we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. Like this is emotionally exhausting. So it feels, it feels like you're putting in work. It feels like you're doing something. It feels like these aren't issues. But then you sit back and you're like, wait a second, wait a second. Like my actions aren't lining up with my words. Like yesterday I made that video about Kavos and I said how you need to be a better judge of character and see if people's actions line up with their words. You need to do that with yourself. Like I have to have practice a lot of self-awareness. Like do my actions line up with my words, right? Like I try to tell people on a regular basis. That's why you get a real version of Chris. I, uh, I teach my clients like at all times I wanna be me. Like if you see me whether it's on YouTube or you see me in a treatment center running a group or you see me at a grocery store, you are meeting the exact same version of Chris because I'm constantly working on making sure my actions uh, are the same as my words, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of Garrett. Like this is such a journey and he was able to see his own growth and I really hope he's proud of, he's as proud of himself as other people are in his life. So my big thing and a uh, pretty main theme of this video, what I do with things, and we're gonna learn a new word right now, and it is the word personification. So the official definition of uh, personification is this, the attribution of a personal nature or human characteristics to something non-human. In simpler terms, it basically means giving human characteristics or some form of life or personality to something that is not human. And this isn't crazy uncommon. You see it in movies and television shows and in pop culture all the time. And a less abstract version of this is everyone kind of does this with like their pets. People personify their cats and their animals. That's why we dress up little dogs and costumes and stuff. People do this, but I just do it with like everything, like lamps and coins and candy and scary dolls and records. So this clip right here where Aaron is talking about personification, like this is why therapy in any form is very, very beneficial. Journaling is a form of therapy. Like it's important to get down to the root cause and Garrett figured out, he figured out why he does what he does. Like. For example, we often tell people with addictions that drugs and alcohol are only a symptom of the problem. Um, when I work with people, I'm trying to get down to the root of the problem. Like even when I'm working with people about their depression, their anxiety, 
their trauma, whatever it is. It's like, let's get down to the root of the problem because we can't just look at the surface level stuff. Like, because if we don't figure out why it's happening, then we're never gonna change it. Where the problem comes in is that I do this with so many things that it starts to stand in the way of my life. I was accumulating these things and I wasn't knowing how to let go of them. And that was creating a lot of problems that were leading to other problems. Like having a place that was so crazy that I felt embarrassed anytime that someone came in because it was like, oh no, I can't have like a guy over because it's too disgusting in here because there's like too many things everywhere because I can't throw anything away, you know what I mean? And I would try to organize, but even when I did, it was just me shoving all my precious things or cool things that I love into like closets and stuff. And then it wasn't functional. And that meant that I couldn't ever have like a proper upload schedule because I always like, no, I, can't, I don't want, ever want to film because like I have to like clean my place and do all this stuff and it's gonna be like a three day process because I'm terrible at cleaning. So in that clip, Garrett's talking about his fear of change and I just made a video about this fear of change and like this is a point that I didn't even touch on in that video. So like a lot of us don't want to change. We, we have these different things. So I was telling you guys the other day about like setting up an inventory, looking at your good qualities and your bad qualities, getting, uh, you know, working on or getting rid of the bad qualities, right? Like this is, part of that fear of change and like what you have to recognize. What Garrett is doing here, he's recognizing that the way his house is, it's causing other issues in his life, right? It's making him not do work, okay? So it's affecting his, his job, his income and all that. It's affecting his friendships. He doesn't like to invite people over and do all the things that he wants to do. So what I want all of you to do is like, just look at your life, evaluate your life, like evaluate your life. Like take an inventory and say, okay, which things in my life are negatively affecting my quality of life, right? Maybe you're afraid to go out. Maybe like you love doing something, but your social anxiety is causing you a problem. Like see what is affecting you negatively and hone in on that and work on that. And then I kind of thought, <laughs> this is getting like so deep. We're like going into my mind here. And then I thought, no, if I move to another place, I can like kind of start over and have like a new life and be more organized and stuff. But I took all the stuff from the old place and just put it in here, which is why it was like this for so many months. So right there, Garrett uh, was talking about, he had the idea of what we call a geographical, okay? A geographical is when we run away from our problems. We think that if we go somewhere else, our problems are just gonna go away. We're gonna be fine, we're gonna be better. But the problem with a geographical is no matter where you go, this thing is always with you, okay? So no matter where you go, you're always there. So it's it's a tricky situation it's kind of case by case. Like if any of you want me to make a, a, a video about geographical, Geographicals and like the good and the bad types of geographicals, let me know down in the comments. Like for example, when I was getting sober, I had to do a geographical, but I did it in a way that helped me recover rather than just bringing my problems with me. So if that's something that you want me to talk about, like the difference between running away from your problems and running away to heal, just let me know. Yeah, fast that was, that literally it's only been maybe two minutes, three minutes. And we just cleared out a whole section and you just helped like probably 15 people who need weird crap. <laughs> so what Shane said was very real. To give my cool stuff back to the world. I love that because I know that I found things in thrift stores that I was like, how is this here? Like, see donating is fun too because that stuff served its purpose and you had fun with it, but you're doing well now. You're in a different part of your life and you can buy a new one. That's true. Yes, 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 yes. Right there, that is an amazing clip. That is an amazing clip. This is what I try to teach all of you, all of my clients, this is what I try to teach everybody. The best way to work on your mental health is to quit thinking about you so much. What helps you get out of your, your own um, mental struggle is to think about others. For example, for example, I used to hate sharing. I used to hate sharing my story. I used to not do that. And like people reminded me, they're like, Chris, it's not about you. You need to do it to help somebody else. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So like, for example, for example, like my social anxiety, like when I when I was scared to like do groups in front of large amounts of people, when I'm afraid to, you know, make videos and things like that, I remember it's not about me. I need to do this to help other people. So what Shane is helping Garrett switch, uh, do is switch his mindset. It's not about what Garrett's losing, it's about what Garrett's giving to the less fortunate. So then you feel good about it. So now what you're actually doing is you are rewiring your brain to have a positive reward for the behavior rather than a negative one, right? So this is what you should do. I'll never forget, like maybe a month or two ago, one of you subscribers like 
DM'd me on Instagram and said, hey, I don't like subscribe, I don't like to comment, so here's, here's what I wanna say about your video. And they had a lot of good experience, and I said, listen, when I read that, I, I, as I immediately thought, how many people in the audience could benefit from hearing your story, right? And I was like, so she's, she said that she gets anxious, and I asked her, I said, what's your fear? Are you afraid of being judged, or like, what is it? And she's like, yeah, I'm afraid of being judged. I'm like, you need to quit thinking about you and post this because it's not about you. Your post can help other people. She posted it and I watched the comments and the replies on it and people were saying thank you and stuff like that. So if you're somebody who struggles with that type of social anxiety, quit thinking about how it's gonna affect you and think about how you might be able to help other people. And yeah, and I was just kind of having a panic attack. Like I have never understood what a panic attack was until that night. Like I started sweating and I started like freaking out and feeling really anxious and being like, I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was internalizing it, <laughs> which might sound kind of dark, but I, I was because I wasn't trying to lose my, my shit in front of my friends. You know what I mean? Right there, right there when Garrett was talking about his panic attack. This goes back to the last video I did about exposure therapy. Right? So Garrett, like being exposed in that safe place with his friends around in a safe environment, he was having a panic attack, right? But by the end of the video, he was fine. So on my exposure therapy video that I did uh, just yesterday or the other day about Shane Dawson, I saw some comments. I saw some comments where people were like, no, I, I can't do exposure therapy because it makes me feel uncomfortable. It makes me sick. It makes me, uh, you know, and all this. It's like, yes, that's the point. That's the point. You have to, like you have to push yourself and you have to be uncomfortable. You have to go through those things. That's what I'm trying to explain. Like, you guys, I'm never gonna sugarcoat this thing for you. Improving your mental health is hard. It's hard, but it is worth it. I promise you that. So yeah, there might be, you know, like for example with Garrett, right? He went through seven, five or seven hours, I forgot how much time it was, five or seven hours of being really uncomfortable, dealing with his anxiousness and like them throwing away stuff. He dealt with that for five to seven hours, but now he is at peace because he sat in that uncomfortability for hours on end. So I hope that inspires some of you. Like my the way I see my, uh, my mental health improvement and the way I try to do it, if that person can do it, I can do it too. All right? And I want you guys to look at that with me too. Like, I am nobody special. I am nothing special. So when I share my experience with you guys, like, I wanna inspire you to do these things too. Like, if I can do it, you can do it too. When Shane came in, when you guys all came in, I was like, ashamed. I almost wanted to be like, get out. Like, get out. I don't know what to do right now. I don't want anyone to see me like this. But like, I can't live like that, you know? And you kind of made me realize some stuff about like, that you don't have to be like that. Cause you came in and you were just like, it's okay, you're not good at this, I am. So yeah. you can have people help you. And I guess I just didn't really realize that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like the same thing as for me, like I was doing YouTube all by myself for like, what, 10 years or I don't know. Yeah. And then I finally was like, oh, you know, you came along, Andrew came along, Ryland, all these people that are like, no, like, let's help, let's do it together. And I was like scared. Yeah. And now look, I'm so happy. You know, I gave up control and now I'm happier and you gave up control and look at everything we threw away. I don't even remember what you threw away. But I'm so glad you did. <laughs> like, I almost just did cry. Oh, like this is, this just warms my heart right here. This, this clip warms my heart. Like, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. Like, I, I know I do a lot of videos like telling you which friends to cut out of your life, but these are the friends that you need in your life. Like, how many of you don't talk about your mental health and your mental state because you're so worried about being judged? You guys, all of us are going through so much crap on a daily basis, like don't worry about that. And if that person judges you, they're not a great friend, but like you see that like Shane and Ryland and Morgan and Andrew, like they're amazing friends. Like they're not judging him, they just, they sincerely want to help. And that's something that I struggled with, especially as a guy, you know, with that pride and ego and I gotta be manly and not vulnerable. Like I have to open up to people and, and I have to realize that people do want to help me and they want to support me and they're not going to judge me, you know? Like, these are the type of people that you need in your life. And that's really, that's really what I'm trying to turn this community into. It's just where we support each other and don't judge each other, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like, as your friend, it has been hard for me to watch you not upload consistently because mm -hmm. like, you always have so much going on. You're always in this chaos and you're always whatever. Yeah. So it's like, that's why you're not uploading as much. That's why you're not. I mean, I've you, always you know? had, I mean, I could show like a montage right now of how many times I've been like, hey guys, like I'm coming back now or there are things I needed to sort out or there were this, but really the truth of it is that I was always living in chaos in so many respects, like not sleeping right, not 
eating right, not having my place organized, not having like a bed to sleep on. That's not stuff that I'm gonna be like, hey YouTube, <laughs> yeah. check this out. I guess I didn't know why I was failing so hard at this because I'm really excited to be on YouTube just as much as I was the first time you made me upload, <laughs> you know, my first video. Like, I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. I did not think this was gonna happen. So yes, yes, right here he talks about living in this state of chaos. Living in the chaos, and so many of us do this. Like, one thing that breaks my heart when I read your comments is, is your acceptance of your mental illness, but you don't wanna do anything about it. Like, that's not what my, my channel's about, and I want you guys to learn from my channel. There's a reason why I say we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution, right? So like Garrett, I hope this inspires you, like Garrett noticed how his life was chaotic, his life was unmanageable, but he took actionable steps. Like, remember, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional, all right? We have to take action steps. We can't just sit there and say, oh, everything's terrible, my life's chaotic, this is just the way I am. No, you can start healing, you can start moving forward and take little baby steps to do so. A little something called self-care, that's right. No, but I'm serious, in this new place there have been many things that I have been working on personally about myself. Self-care being one of them. Some others include washing my clothes ever, now that I have a washing machine in my place. Not playing Spider-Man until the sun comes up, the exception of course being last night when I played Spider-Man until the sun came up. Brushing my teeth more often than when I just kind of remember to. <laughs> no, but seriously, that has been such a fun part of living a more organized, cleaner life. Like I can be a lot more, um, I don't know, hygienic and take care of myself better. But yeah. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Speaking of baby steps, like I love this part. I love this part so much. Like this is what I keep trying to tell all of you who struggle with things like depression or anxiety. Like Garrett, like just saying things like he does his laundry, he's trying to brush his teeth more, he's trying to uh, take a shower regularly. This is what I'm telling you about. Like you don't need to run out and go see a therapist, you don't need to run out and go to like, you know, a dance party or something, whatever you wacky kids are doing these days. You don't have to do anything like that. Do small self-care things a day. Like if you want some neuroscience, when you set small achievable goals for yourself, like today I'm gonna make sure I brush my teeth, today I'm gonna make sure I shower, today I'm going to clean my kitchen. Whatever these small goals are, you actually get boosts of dopamine and serotonin. So make small little goals. This is why self-care is so important. Like it seems stupid, it seems trivial, but when you set these small things up for yourself, I promise you, you will feel, you will feel better. And you don't even gotta believe me, believe in science. But yeah, in closing, I guess I wanna just say, um, if you ever need help with anything in your life, um, try not to internalize it too much. Try to reach out to someone, talk to them about it, because I've learned so many times, especially with Shane, that's something that I've done pretty often with him, is like opened up about an insecurity of mine, and it's brought us closer, or he's helped me get through it, or, you know, I talk to Andrew a lot about stuff. So the last thing I wanna talk about with that is, right here, like, Garrett had this clarity that I did, and he's retraining his brain, and basically what he realized is, like, he sits, he sits in the problem too long. He sits in it for way too long. But as soon as he calls somebody, as soon as he reaches out, he starts to feel better, right? And this is something that we have to retrain our brain to do. Like, I used to be like, my problems are my problems, I don't wanna bug anybody, I don't wanna talk to anybody, and I would sit in my problems for days or weeks at a time. But then as soon as I would call, somebody, I would feel better. And I'm like, what? Why did I wait so long, right? So I started to short it. So rather than waiting two weeks until I called somebody and asked for help, I started waiting a week. And then after that, I started waiting five days. Then I started waiting three days. Then I started waiting two days. Then I started waiting one day. And then it's like, I'm dealing with an issue, I'm talking to somebody about it. And that's the way I retrain my brain because my brain is now associating reaching out for help with me feeling better. So to end this video, to end this video, I wanna say I'm super proud of Garrett. I hope all of you are inspired and can take some real good lessons from this and it helps you do something in your life that you've been struggling with. But here's the thing, we gotta keep Garrett accountable. We have to keep Garrett accountable. So here's what I'm doing. Like I said, I was not subscribed to Garrett because of his infrequent uploads, right? I am now subscribed to Garrett. And here's an issue I see with a lot of people. They do something like this, but then they don't follow through. So Garrett told us that the main reason he wasn't uploading much was because of his dirty house. So now that's out the window. So will he keep uploading? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set a calendar reminder in my phone right now from one month from today, all right? So November 21st, we are going to see how many uploads Garrett did, okay? 
So I want all of you to do the same and we will keep Garrett accountable and we'll tweet at him and we'll see if he did. I, I don't know, like Garrett does a lot of effort. He puts a lot of effort into his editing. I think if this is his full-time gig, I would think that he should be able to pump out at least one video a week, at least one day, video a week. That's what I'm thinking. So by the end, by next month, let's check back and see how Garrett's doing. The other thing, I, I hope they kind of do a follow up or I hope Garrett keeps us up to date. Like, is he keeping his house clean, right? Or did he have a relapse, all right? But anyways, anyways, that's all I got for this video. But down in the comments below, like, let's, let's, let's ask this question. Like, do you struggle, do you struggle with sitting in the problem and not getting into the solution? Or do you struggle with not reaching out for help? And if so, why, all right? Or do you struggle with sharing your story? Any of the topics I talked about in this uh, video, anything that you can relate to, let's have a conversation down in the comments below, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. Let's all tell Zach he did an amazing job as well down in the comments because I had a ton, a ton of clips in this video. All right, but anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, ring that notification bell, and a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And did you know we now have Rewired Soul sweatshirts and other mental health merch over in the shop? Check it out by clicking or tapping right there. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.